Hey everybody, it's low carb and keto nutrition specialist Amy Berger bringing you, as always, keto without the crazy. Today I have what I think and hope will be a very helpful mindset strategy for you, specifically with regard to weight loss on a low carb or keto diet, or frankly, any other way of eating. Before I get to that, if you are watching this before October 16th, 2023, check the link in the notes below for my Stall Slayer Masterclass. This is an online course, so you can do it from anywhere in the world. It's self-paced and it is all about breaking those dreaded fat loss stalls on low carb and keto diets. So it kind of dovetails very nicely with today's topic, but everything you need to know about why your fat loss might be very slow or stuck and what to do about it is in that course. So click on that link, the Stall Slayer course, and don't quote me on this, but if you're watching this after October 16th, 2023, it might still be open. So if you're a little bit late, click on the link anyway and see if that course is still available. Okay, on to the topic. As I so often say to you in these videos, food is the easy part, right? What to eat, what to do. The question is, why is it so difficult to do it? And very often we psych ourselves out. We get in our own way. And I think this can be especially true for those of you out there who are looking to lose a pretty substantial amount of weight. And this could absolutely apply even if you're only looking to lose a few pounds. So this applies to anyone out there who's wanting to lose weight and who maybe feels very discouraged and just, again, psychs themselves out. I want to talk to you about breaking your weight loss up into much smaller chunks. If you have 50 pounds to lose, a hundred pounds to lose, more than a hundred pounds, or even 20 pounds, it can seem very daunting. Like, oh my goodness, I, I have to lose 50 pounds. I have to lose a hundred pounds. It just feels like this insurmountable task. It feels like you're climbing Mount Everest or something. And it doesn't have to be that way. So I'm going to compare this type of weight loss to two other things that I think you will see how nicely they help to explain this process of breaking a big, scary, intimidating task into smaller pieces to make it much more manageable and doable. So in case you don't know, I'm a three-time book author and I'm working on book number four. And so nobody sits down and writes a book. You don't just vomit a book onto your computer or onto your paper if you're writing longhand. It takes a long time. You start with a sentence, a paragraph, a section, a chapter, and you add little bits to it over time until all of a sudden you've got an entire manuscript. If each time I was working on a book, I sat down in the morning thinking, I have to write a book or I'm writing a book today, I would never do it. I would say, oh my, I don't know how to write a book. Oh my goodness, 200 pages, 300 pages, that's crazy. I didn't have to write a book on any one given day. All I needed to do was write one section. Maybe today I'll tackle the section on insulin resistance. You know, maybe today I'll tackle the section on what to eat at a fast food restaurant on a keto diet. You can see just, I'm gonna work on one section or this week I wanna finish chapter four. So you break it up into smaller chunks that just feel so much more realistically doable for you. It's really hard to write a book. It's very easy to write a paragraph. It's easy to write a section. And so I also, in a former life, <laughs> ran two marathons very, very slowly, but I did cross the finish line of both. And if, if 
on every training run I did. You know, a marathon is 26.2 miles, so you, assuming you're not some kind of superhuman person, you have to train for it. So over the course of several weeks or months, you build up endurance, you, you go on longer and longer training runs. So let's say I was going out for a 10 mile run. Sometimes that would seem really difficult. I mean, eventually you get to the point where 10 miles is not a big deal for you anymore. It was so long ago, I can hardly imagine that I once was in that place. But anyway, if, if I set out from my door thinking I have to cover 10 miles today, again, very intimidating, very like, I don't even forget it. I'm, I'm not getting off the couch because I can't run 10 miles. But, or let's say I ran four or five miles. Let's say I'm six miles in and I got four miles to go on this training run. I'm like starting to flag, kind of don't want to do it. I didn't have to tell myself I have four miles to go. I could tell myself I'm going to make it to that mailbox down the street. Right? I would give myself a landmark not that far in ahead of me so that I could just make it that far. I'll make it to that red car. And then I get to the red car and I'm like, oh, I'm already here. That wasn't so bad. Maybe I could make it to the end of the street. Maybe I'll make it to that stop sign way down there. You just keep doing it in very little chunks and all of a sudden you've gone 10 miles. Just like an actual marathon, 26.2, you don't just leap off the finish line and do 26.2 miles in a single bound. You go, you put one foot in front of the other. You take one step several thousand times and you cross the finish line. So this is how you tackle a very big daunting task is you simply break it up into small pieces that are not that challenging for you. So to bring this to weight loss, finally seven minutes in, Bless you for putting up with me. Um, it may feel very, very intimidating to think that you are trying to lose 50 pounds. But you don't have to lose 50 pounds. You have to lose one pound 50 times. You don't have to set out thinking, I need to lose 100 pounds or I'd like to lose 100 pounds you would like to lose one pound a hundred times. And that I that can absolutely still sound a little bit daunting, like, oh, I, I have to do this 50 times. But it's just such a small thing, one pound. It might, you might not have the faith and the belief in yourself and the confidence that you even can lose 50 pounds. You might be thinking, I'll never do it. Keto doesn't work for me anyway. Nothing works. I've never lost weight, blah, blah, blah. So, but you might be, you might not believe that you can lose 50. Do you believe that you can lose one? Do you believe that you are capable of losing one pound? Probably yes. Even, even the most diehard self-loathing among us, the people among us who have the absolute least belief in their selves and in, in their own ability and their own capability to do this, even they can probably muster up the courage and the confidence to think, yep, one pound, I could probably lose one pound. And guess what? If you can lose one pound, then you can lose 50. Because if you can lose the one, just do that 49 more times. Guess what? 50 pounds are gone. <laughs> Not overnight, but you can do it. And I just think that even saying it that way makes it feel much more achievable, much more realistic. And what this also does is that sort of step one of this process is to reframe it Cut it into small chunks that you can do. I don't have to lose 100 pounds. I just need to lose one. The first, the first step of your marathon is one step. The first step in losing 100 pounds or 50 pounds is losing one. Then the second step in this process is to ask yourself, what can I do to lose one pound this week or this month? What do I have to do? What can I do? Right? Didn't I, one of my more recent videos was asking yourself the question, how can I make this easier? 
So now another question to ask, like, like the secret to everything people I'm telling you is to ask yourself good questions and then answer them, give good answers that will help you move along. But first you have to ask the questions. So what can I do to lose one pound this week or this two weeks? Maybe you need to use half the amount of cream in your coffee. If you've got kind of a little, little heavy hand with that heavy whipping cream, maybe you need to eat half the cream. If you currently drink alcohol every night, maybe you need to cut that back to every other night. If you currently have two drinks a night, every night, maybe you need to cut back to one. Maybe, I don't even know what. Like, like for me, I'll tell you right now, one of the things that is an issue for me is fatty condiments. So you all know if you've been watching my channel about my little mayonnaise problem, Mayonnaise isn't the only fatty condiment I have a problem with. I can't buy blue cheese dressing either. I can eat it at a restaurant, but I can't keep it in the house. And there's also, I discovered from this one brand that I get online, these aiolis and these dipping sauces that have the most incredible flavors, but they're oil-based, so they're very high in fat. And keto, we're not afraid of fat. We can eat fat. But there's a limit. You, you can't eat unlimited fat and expect to burn body fat. If, if you're eating so much fat from the outside, your body doesn't need to turn to all its luscious stored fat for fuel. So it's very easy for me to overdo these things. So one way that I personally could tell myself what could I do to lose a pound or two this month is either stop using those altogether or use them much less and instead I have a lot of other ways of adding flavor to my food without quite adding so much fat. You know, you could do sugar-free relishes, salsas, hot sauce, mustard, just all kinds of different other or just herbs and spices, you know, seasonings, ways to add a lot of flavor without adding all that fat. But the point is, the question to ask is, how can I lose one pound this week? Or what, can, what do I need to change to lose one pound this week? How, however you need to say it to yourself, whatever words will resonate best with you, say that to yourself or ask yourself that question. But I just think this is a surprisingly helpful strategy. Both parts are helpful. The what can I do to lose the weight? What, what small change can I make? Because you, you might be thinking, if if you haven't accomplished step one first, cutting it into small chunks, you're still trapped in the mindset of, I have to lose 50 pounds. Or, I, I want to lose 80 pounds. And it's so, and if you think that you need to lose 50, 80, 100 pounds or 50 kilos, 20 kilos, you out there, you kilo people. <laughs> if If that's where your mind is, then you might be thinking that, a small change isn't good enough. You have to radically overhaul everything. Should I start doing four day fast? Should I start following macros? Should I do everything da, 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 like, like all the moving parts? Because you might think that losing 50 pounds, a hundred pounds is such a big thing that you have to do something big to get there. You have to radically overhaul your entire diet and life because otherwise, how are you going to lose 50 pounds? But remember, you no longer need to try to lose 50 pounds. You just have to start with one pound. And to lose one pound, you probably don't have to radically overhaul everything, right? Maybe you could cut back on the alcohol if you drink. I know not everybody does. Maybe you could go a little bit lighter on the heavy cream. Um, go a bit lighter on the nuts if you're including nuts on your keto diet. You know, what are these little small things that you might be able to get rid of or reduce that could get that needle moving a little bit? So that's been really, really helpful for me. And again, as, as seems to happen almost every time I talk about these mindset strategies, it applies to so much else other than keto. Like I, I gave you the two examples of, of the marathon and writing a book, but even any work task, some of my work projects that I don't necessarily want to do, I'm not in the mood to sit down and do it, but I could tell myself, 
what if I just write two sentences? You know, if I, if I have a big document to write or a big article or some material for a course and it's like, I know it's going to take kind of a while. What if I just start with a paragraph? Like, let me just write the intro paragraph. And I will tell you 9.5 times out of 10, once I do that, I just keep going. It's so much easier to just keep going because once you start, the ideas start to flow. Imagine that. <laughs> and I think the same is true of weight loss. You just keep going. You just keep that consistency, keep that momentum. The hardest part is the first step. You know, or sometimes even with work, I might not tell myself the parameter, like what if I just do one paragraph or what if I just write the headline? It might be, what if I just sit down for 30 minutes? or one hour. I don't have to spend all day. It might take all day. It might be a project that's going to take eight hours, 10 hours. If I tell myself, oh, this is going to take all day. I can't, I don't even have the time to do it today. Can I do one hour? And again, invariably one hour turns into three into five and then the thing gets done. All right. 16 and a half minutes in, let's call this one good. Check out that link below for the Stall Slayer course. I'm telling you everything you need to know about fat loss and weight loss on low carbon keto diets and without the crazy, how to do it simply, how to do it sanely, um, how to do it without losing your mind. And like I said in the video, I did a video about the Stall Slayer with a lot of details for you. The course is a few hours worth of video lessons with me, plus written content that you can download. And it's cheaper than one consultation with me. So if you would ever want to pick my brain about fat loss or anything else on keto, it's actually less spendy for you to just do the course. So check out the course, sign up if you are so inclined, but either way, Please subscribe to the channel if you're not already and hit that like button. Give me that thumbs up button and I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.